we're right now at three and a half hours. Yeah. And you, uh, your school, the Navy Postgraduate School, uh, has paid for six hours, and that's a, a pretty quick time. It's uh, and the UAV group. So uh, this is Lieutenant Justin Hay Hayward, and he's going to. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to start the airplane up and just see if you can take off. I'm not going to do anything except stand next to you and uh, go out and just kind of do some circling. Uh, we might even set up for an approach and see when I have to touch the stick, okay? That'll be fun. So I'll hand you the radio, and uh, we'll just walk out that area. And, and make sure you're taxiing slowly. There you are, and right on up. All the way. And then you can come down on throttle anytime you want, you know, and just kind of See, now I haven't touched a thing. You took off fine. At three and a half hours, I would expect, especially a younger student like you, uh, to be able to do that now. Don't go too fast or you can be disoriented. Speed is a disorienting factor. So you always want to have an airplane to begin with, like this one, that flies nice and slow. And when I say nice and slow, I mean that, that, that it flies nicely at slow speeds. So now, just coming right over our heads here, we don't want to go behind ourselves, see? So now you can add a little throttle again, because it was getting kind of low, and if you got that low and didn't have any power and then no potential or kinetic energy, you know, what are you going to do? So remember, you always fly as if your engine is about to quit. Okay, let's just chop the throttle completely and bring this one in for an approach. Now, there's the nice blue sky. I'm going to land near the Christmas tree there, or over it anyway. And and then up on power, all the way, oops, okay. Okay, yeah, and off you go again. You're so confident, you took off. And I was back there about five feet away, and I came up here, but I, you didn't even need me. This looks very nice. So now, now here, you don't want to get slow again, but not too fast either. Use the blue sky. The blue, the, use the force, young Jedi. Now the blue sky rule says keep those wheels in the blue until you're here. We know we're over the runway now. Okay, now up on power. Now you're in the blue again. And you notice that when you're on the ground or close to the ground, you weren't in the blue. And you didn't need to be because you were 150% sure that you were over the runway. So that's what the blue sky rule says that if you're seeing your airplane, and you're always seeing your airplane, never take your eyes off your airplane when you're flying it, then nothing is behind it but blue sky until you're over the runway. Now this is that landing longer landing, see it's really easier because you feel like you're in the cockpit. Left and right are not so disorienting, okay? Now when you come off the throttle, you, you don't need to have it going up like that. You can level it off and drop it off. It's kind of like using a clutch in the old uh, stick cars, you know. You, uh, you bring one in and uh, slowly and engage it, right? So when you're coming up uh, to pattern altitude, okay, right on up, you're using the throttle. Now you're disengaging throttle off power. That means, yeah, and see, there. Nice and level, and then we can take our fingers off at any time, see, and just see it in a nice trim. So now, now we don't really want it to fly much faster than trim, and today we've got very little wind, so we don't have to have steep approaches. Now, see this, the, the uh, wires in the background, they're part of the blue sky rule. So we don't go below those wires, okay, right on up. There you're in the blue again. And the key about the blue sky rule is that when you're up in the blue, you see the airplane as a single entity. It's a point, it's, it's all in one place. The tail, the wheels, you know, it's so close that it doesn't matter. You can see the different parts, but it doesn't matter that you see them. Now, when you get close in, you're gonna start watching the rear wheels because they're the first things that touch the ground, okay? 
So here, wheels, see the rear wheels? Let's go with our left wheel touch right there. See, they up in power. The left wheel touched slightly before the right, just because we could do it. And, and if you're saying, well, Ray, I'm just trying to land this thing. You're talking about a wheel and touching one before the other. Yeah, that's the kind of precision that you will get. All, all humans are capable of this. It's amazing that all of us have the same capabilities wired into our brains. But the initial programs that teach, uh, tell us how to fly are wrong, and they're driven by fear and panic. So we have to replace those programs with correct programs, for the airplane anyway, for flying, which are born of training and repetition. And that's this repetition we're doing. We're doing virtually two landings per minute for two hours a day if we can do it, if, if you can handle that much. If, you know, we don't get too exhausted before that happens. The most I ever had uh, flying in one day, one person, three and a half hours. And that's a lot of flying. When you realize that he was landing two times per minute for three and a half hours. And uh, so he set an endurance record. See, here's where we're holding it off, hold it off. See, no, no nose forward. Okay, right on up. When you see that nose start to come forward, it's your job to pull it back, but not to go up. And that's the, that's the, that's again like the engaging the clutch, you know? You do it too quickly and the car stalls. You don't do it enough, you burn the clutch out. Well, here, you're trying to get down to where the airplane is a foot off the ground because it's a foot tall airplane. So we're not there yet. We see our wheels there. We're out of the blue. Here we are, inches off, inches off. Hold, 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 hold. Perfect. Right on up. So the idea of pulling back on the stick, not so the airplane will go up, but just that it'll, so that it'll continue to fly at a foot off the ground or less. That's the thing you're trying to do. And see, here we are about, what, 10 feet off. Now we're at five, three, one. Now we're holding. Hold, 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 hold. Good. When you're holding like that, of course the airplane's slowing down, so it's going to get to stall speed. But if it stalls with just a few inches under the wheels, that's a perfect landing. If it stalls with two or three feet under the wheels, that's a broken prop or worse. Five feet, it gets worse, you know. So our job is to get it down here and then just let it slow down. See, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, right on up. Now, when there's very little wind like this, our approaches can be flatter. They don't have to drive down so much. You're always trying to get to the same place, though, and that is one foot off the ground at the near end of the runway. And at three and a half hours, you're doing a great job. I'm helping just a little bit with these up, so you don't want not too much of a bank angle in there. Okay. I think you'll make it by six hours, just like those other guys did. And of course, the criterion is that I'll turn this camera on and step away and watch you do three landings. Actually, I'll still be close enough if I see something really bad. <laughs> but. Uh, You'll have to do three more in a row. There's no wave offs in between allowed. Uh, and you must taxi back, assuming the conditions are okay for taxiing. Sometimes we've had people solo in pretty bad winds and this is not a very wide runway for landing. So, uh, but you should taxi back to us. Okay, on up. Now a bounce like that could be really bad if it were on the nose wheel. That one bounced pretty much flat. So it didn't even hit the prop or anything. We don't have a lot of prop clearance. So, you know, it's not so bad that it bounces. It's how it bounced. If it bounced on the nose wheel even a little, it's real bad. If it bounces quite a bit on the, off the main wheels, it, now it depends on what you do after that bounce. See, let's try to purposely bounce and then and don't, don't add power for a bit. Okay, boy, I see now we're now, okay, up on power now. So we bounced just a little bit. But the next time we came down, we touched down nicely. And that's what you're always trying to do.